Greetings from the Center for the Enrichment of Teaching and Learning. Um, just wanted to update you, our drop in and learn this week is gonna be sort of more of a click on and learn uh, due to some uh, recent uh, life events like my battle with gravity, we've had to make some adjustments to the schedule. So I will be on the Biddeford campus on the April 4th and then on the Portland campus on April 5th. So sort of switching those days and I'll be available um, and the times will be listed in the email so you can take a look at that to come and discuss this. But what I wanted to do was take a moment and discuss the learning principle that we're going to uh, overview. So if you wanted some additional information, you can come talk to me about that. But what we're looking at um, in this week's drop in and learn or this month's drop in and learn is the principle of um, self-explaining. And that is sort of combining some of the other principles that we've talked about. You may remember that just recently we sent out a um, drop in looking at connecting, sort of or, um, that idea that we assist our students in setting up a structure, setting up a format in which they can bring in new information. So as they bring in that new information, they can connect it to previous held ideas, previous thoughts, thus making it easier for them to integrate that into their knowledge base, into their business. Because one of the things that can happen is that as we work with new information, and especially when we try to um, integrate it into other things that we're working with, we only have so much uh, working memory that we can use. So if we're constantly trying to think on past information, as we bring that information into our working knowledge, it may make it harder for us to go through a procedure because we sort of have to keep jumping back to something new that we've learned. So if we have some of those ideas connected, it's easier to grab those ideas and then use a little bit less of that working um, knowledge. The other thing that can come into play and that we talked about most recently is um, the idea of practicing. So as a student practices something over and over and you know giving them class time to do some of these things or if they practice a pre procedure perhaps in more of a clinical setting or more of a lab based setting the more they practice this and the example that we had used in or one of the examples we have used in this handout was the idea of creating thesis statements and giving students the opportunity um, for you know to practice writing those thesis statements and the more a student practices a particular idea the more they go through that procedure the easier it is for them to do that skill and uh, demonstrate a knowledge of that skill and thus makes it possible to evaluate them as they've gotten better at this skill but one of the problems that was mentioned with um, sort of going through that practicing over and over and as, as something becomes rate, rote and we pull it out of that working memory is that you know as you go through a procedure sometimes you know, take an example when you drive home and it takes you a week to notice a new building that's gone up we sort of lose perhaps some of those nuances or um, those adjustments we can make to make our the way we go through a procedure the way we go through a practice even better so one of the ways that you can go through and do that and that the, the principle that we're looking at this week is, is self-explaining. So as a student goes through a procedure or goes through um, perhaps something in the lab or something in the clinical, they're going to actually speak about what their uh, thought processes are as they're going through that. So they're just going to talk through what they're doing, what they're thinking, why they're making the choices that they're making as they go through a particular procedure. They're just going to talk about those things out loud. And, you know, so as they make adjustments, as they make changes, as they've gone from choice A to choice B, they are just talking through that entire process. And you're there monitor, monitoring as they go through that process, as they go through that talk and making those fine subtle adjustments or changes to correct their thinking or to make those adjustments to their thinking to make that process a little bit more smooth or run more smoothly might be a better way to say that so um, 
as as they go through that, you're their mentor and and walking them through them. And it, and it's as simple it's as simple as that. So again, so that those ideas that those ideas that they practice and they've gotten better at that they're not missing the fine nuances. And as they bring all these ideas together that you've talked about over the semester, talked about over the class, as they start to connect them one to the other, you're there to make sure that those connections are happening in a way that's going to serve them, that is, is, is correct, and their assumptions and those the, that they're making as they make those ideas more complex, that they're making those correct assumptions and making the final choices. So there's a quick overview of self-explaining, and we can look at it in more detail if you want to stop in. Again, I've written the times that I'm going to be in on those two days in um, the email. So glad to be back. Looking forward to working with you each and every day. And again, if there's any way that we can help to make your teaching easier, your process in the classroom better, please let us know. Be well and have an excellent day.